Hi, GOH. This is Unit 4, Lesson 5, and today we're going to bisect an angle, which is probably my second favorite construction. My first one is perpendicular bisector, as I've already said. But bisecting an angle is pretty simple, and um, it's fun. So here we go. So one of the fundamental assumptions or axioms of geometry is that every angle has a unique bisector. So to bisect an angle means to cut it in half. So there's only one line that will cut an angle in half. So a single line divides an angle into two angles with equal measure. Constructing the angle bisector is relatively easy, but it is an important concept. So the rules are right here on how to do it. I'm just going to go ahead and do it, but you can read the rules if you'd like. You have them there as reference. So to, I'm taking angle A, and I want to bisect the angle. So the first thing you do is you draw an arc. So open your compass. That arc can be as big or as far as you want. It has to touch both sides of the angle. So it has to touch the bottom ray of the angle, and it needs to touch the top ray of an angle. Now, you don't necessarily have to label these, but since the directions are describing this, I will label it. So where the ray that you just drew, the arc that you just drew, sorry, where the arc you just drew touches the bottom ray, I'm going to call that point C, and where that arc you just drew touches the top ray, I'm going to call that point B. Now what you do is you take your compass and you put it on point B, and I want to draw an arc out here in the middle somewhere. All right, so as long as your compass is somewhere out here, that's great. If your compass is only open this much, you need to open it a little bit. All right, so it does not have to be the same setting that I just used for the first part. But make sure that it's out in the middle somewhere because you're going to have arcs 2 and 3 out here and you want them to meet. So my compass is at B. I'm going to draw an arc out here in the middle. Now keep the same setting. Move down to point C with that same radius that you have on your compass and draw an arc and where those two arcs meet they did say that I'm going to call that point D but again I'm just doing this oops, D so it matches the um, directions that are written right there now what I do is using a straight edge I now take uh, my straight edge and I connect point A with point D I have bisected that angle. If I took out a protractor, I've completely cut those angles in half. So angle BAD is congruent to angle CAD. All right, and let's look at some of the questions that I had here. So draw an arc with a center at A that intersects the two rays of the angle. Mark the intersection point B and C. What is true about both of these points with respect to A? So with respect to A, how far away is B and how far away is C? Well, I was using a compass and I made an arc with the same radius to create B and C, so points B and C are the same distance from A. Now the directions, we've already done this, using B and C as centers, draw arcs of the same radius so that they intersect. Label that point as D. Note that the arcs here do not need to be the same radius as you did for A. What's true about point D? Well, point D is the same distance away from B and from C also, okay? And I think I have that written down. Point D is equidistant from B and C. Now, um, so B and C, not that I need to, but I just want to show you something. So I'm going to draw a line. Okay, so I'm done with the construction, but I just want to draw a line connecting B to D, and I want to draw a line connecting B to C, and I don't know if you can see that I now have two triangles. I have triangle ABD on the top and triangle CAD on the bottom. Those triangles are congruent to each other. The reason they're congruent is we said that B and C were the same distance away from A, and B and C were the same distance away from D, and they share the side in the middle, AD. Therefore, those triangles are congruent to each other, and that's a reason why this, these angles are congruent by CPC, CPCTC, so angle BAD is congruent to angle CAD. Okay, now that's sort of what we're going to prove down below. So I'm just filling in the reasons for the proof showing why AD must bisect angle BAC. So AB is equal to AC by construction. I made it that way. B is the same distance from A that C is from A. 
BD is equal to CD by construction because again I used a compass with the same radius and both B and C are the same distance away from D. Why is something congruent to itself? That's that line that they share in the middle, line AD. AD is congruent to AD by reflexive property. Now the triangles then, I've already marked it, the triangles are congruent by side, side, side. Since the triangles are congruent, that makes all of the rest of the corresponding angles and sides congruent. I just really want to show that AD is bisecting BAC. So I'm going to say angle BAD is congruent to angle CAD, and that's what's written as step 5. And the reason is CPCTC. And since those angles are congruent, then that means AD had to have bisected angle BAC. And that's my definition of angle bisector. Okay, so that's why this construction works. It's a nice, easy, fun one to do. So flip this over to the next page. Let's try some more. So again, I'll walk you through the steps. You can do it with me. All right, I'm going to put my compass on the angle that I'm trying to bisect. You open it as much or as little as you want. It does need to touch both sides of the um, angle, so the, the bottom ray and the top ray. A lot of these constructions are done the same way, that you draw an initial ray, and then from that point of intersection of the initial ray, you draw two more rays. I'm going to open my compass a little bit more because I want to make sure arcs, rays, uh, arcs 2 and 3 intersect out here. So I'm going to draw an arc, and then keeping the same, I'm going to move it to where the first arc intersected that ray, and I'm going to draw an arc. So again, there are three arcs that you're drawing. The initial arc is by putting your compass on the vertex, and then where that arc, the first initial arc, touches the bottom ray, you put your compass. If you need to open it a little bit more, you can, and I draw arc 2 out here. And then I put my compass where the initial first arc touched the top of the ray. And I put my compass. And then I just connect that point of intersection with the vertex of the angle. I have cut that angle in half. We'll try one more. So this one I have a right angle. So that symbol right there means it's a right angle. If I cut a right angle in half, how many degrees will each half have? It should have 45 degrees. So I'm going to draw my first initial arc. That arc must touch the bottom ray and the top ray. Oops. And then I'm going to take my compass where that first initial arc touches the bottom. I'm going to open up my compass, make sure it's just going to make arcs out here in the middle somewhere. I draw an arc where the first arc touches the other ray of my angle, I'm going to use the same setting. I'm going to draw an arc. And now where those arcs meet, I'm going to connect that with the vertex of my angle. That point of intersection out there will be connected. Since this angle was 90 degrees, each of these angles, if you took out a protractor and measured them, should be 45. Okay. Uh, in the last unit, we proved that points that lie along the angle bisector are equidistant from the sides of the angle. The key to understanding this is another funda fundamental assumption in geometry. And that assumption is the shortest distance from a point to a line is the length of the perpendicular bisector that can be drawn from the point to the line. We're going to use this in the next lesson as well. But basically, if I have a point... And I have a line, so if I have a point and I have a line, the shortest distance from that point to the line is the perpendicular bisector that goes straight down like this, perpendicular, right? If I went this way, not perpendicular, it's getting longer, the line, longer. The shortest distance is from that point to the line is right straight down. That would make a righty, uh, 90 degree angle. So that's the concept that I'm going to be using in the next lesson tomorrow. So we're going to quickly review the thinking behind the proof that points along the angle bisector are equidistant from the sides of the angle. 
So I have a diagram here, angle CAB has been bisected by AD. So the construction was done, I've already bisected it. D is just some arbitrary point on the angle bisector, such that CD is perpendicular to AC, and you can see I already have that right angle mark in there, and BD is perpendicular to AB. So AD is, a per is the angle bisector, and D is just any point. What triangle congruence theorem could be used to show that the triangle ACD, which is the one on top, is congruent to triangle ABD? Now remember, I've bisected this angle. I've cut this angle in half. Okay, uh, yeah, CAB has been bisected. There we go. So angle 1 and angle 2 are congruent to each other, right? They're congruent because I bisect bisected the angle. And if these are right angles, angle C and angle B are also congruent because they have to be 90 degrees. And they share this side in the middle. Okay, so these two triangles are congruent by angle angle side. There's a right angle, angle one is con there's a right angle, and that's angle ACD and angle ABD. Angle one is congruent to angle two because it was an angle bisector. AD is equal to itself. So AD is congruent to AD reflexive, so therefore angle angle side. What is true about CD and BD? Why must this be true? How does it show that D is equidistant from AC and AB? The triangles are congruent. Therefore, let me grab another color. If my triangles are congruent, doesn't that make CD and BD congruent by CPCTC? They're asking me what's true about them. They are true by CPCTC. Okay. Uh, the triangles are congruent, so CD is equal to BD by CPCTC. And since CD and BD are perpendicular to AC and AB, then the shortest distance from D to AC and AB has to be the same. Um, construct a line, I'm just reading the last part. Construct a line that represents all points equidistant from, so I'm going to not do that last part. All they wanted me to do on this last part is to do an angle bisector of BAD. So basically you have an, an angle bisector of an angle bisector. Okay, so I'm just constructing that angle bisector, but we've practiced enough of them, and we will practice some more in class tomorrow.